In this video, we're going to go through the new DAX query view that came out as part of the November updates. We're going to go through some basic things like how you can enable it and some of the things that you can do with this new view. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the DAX query view is a new view that is available for you in Power BI Desktop that lets you write, edit, and preview your DAX queries, similar to how third-party tools like Tabular Editor works. And this view is particularly convenient simply because it means that for some basic DAX editing, you don't really need to go to the third party tools, you can simply just stay within Power BI Desktop to make those changes. So if you want to start using the new DAX query view, you need to make sure that your Power BI Desktop is up to date to the November 2023 version or later so that you can start using it. Uh, you will find it on the left hand side here as the fourth view from one of these panes. Now, if you are up to date and you still can't see it, just need to make sure that it's enabled in the settings menu because it's still a preview feature as of today. So to enable that, you just need to make sure you go to settings and then go to the preview features and just make sure that this part here, DAX query view is enabled. Restart your Power BI desktop and this view should be now available to you. So let's go to the actual view itself. So here is the DAX query view and how it looks like. Let's go through to some of the main components of this view. So you have in the middle here the query editor and this is basically what you will use to write or edit your DAX queries. So the syntax as you will notice is basically the same as the one that you will see on the DAX formula bar. On the right hand side here is the data pane. So this is where you'll see all of your tables, your columns, in your measures, in your model. The results section here at the bottom is essentially the preview of the results of your DAX queries when you hit the run button here on the top. Looking at the bottom here, where you will normally find your pages, you have now query pages here instead. So that means that uh, you can create multiple query tabs poking around on your data model. You can rename them or organize them and they will be saved as part of your data model. So that means that if you make some more queries, save them, close your desktop file and open it up again, they should load up like you left it before. We're going to go through it later with an example so I can show you. So then we look at the ribbon button at the top here, which has just some basic formatting options available for you when you're writing your DAX queries. So what we've covered so far seems to be very familiar setup, especially if you've used tools like uh, Management Studio before. However, if you haven't used any of those tools before, don't worry, we're going to go through it together because it's actually not that difficult. It's very intuitive and easy to use. So first of all, just uh, to give you some context, we are using the subsets of our typical Northwind dataset, which is a company that sells grocery goods internationally. We have some tables and some columns and some measures that we are going to use as part of the demo today. It's not too important to know how they're written, but just to know that uh, that is the context of our data model. So as you'll notice here in our DAX query view, when we first opened it, it actually created an example code here, which is essentially starting with some comments as well as something to evaluate. So this one is pretty simple, actually. So I think it just took one of my tables uh, by random. But what it's done is it's generated a DAX query that gets the top 100 rows from the products table. So it's prefixed by the evaluation which is what you'll need to run your queries from this view. And uh, let's see what it does when we hit run. So when I hit the run button here, you'll see that the results pane at the bottom started to show some results. So what it's done is exactly that. So it's given us the top 100 entries from that products table. So it gives you all of the columns 
and all of the values in those columns for those top 100 rows. So pretty handy if you want to snoop around and see you know, what is in that table. Now, as you'll know, because this code is basically the DAX code similar to what you're used to, it means that to get the same results, even before the DAX review, you can do this already using calculated tables. So if we just copy this, for example, let's go to our table view, let's create a new table. Oops gonna create this one and call it tests. I just copied the code that was in the DAX query view. And as you can see, it gives us the same result. The benefit of having the DAX query view is that it's a lot faster to set up without having to create uh, these temporary tables. And it's a more dedicated view to writing DAX code. So now let's go back to the DAX query view here and let's have a look at what is available to us at the, at the ribbon on the top here. So we have a few things like cut, copy and paste, but on the editing side of things, we have a few things here. So we have this one format query, which as you can see, if I click it, it simply just creates the indentations and line breaks to make your code a little bit easier to read. It's especially helpful in sort of the coding environment, especially if you have DAX queries that are lines and lines long. It just makes it a little bit easier for other developers to read your code. We have comment and uncomment here. So these just whatever line you have selected, it will just comment or add those uh, commenting lines here. It just gets ignored as you know already. And the uncomment does the reverse. Uh, you can also highlight a few lines like this. So similar to how you would expect from a coding IDE. So you highlight multiple rows and then hit comment and uncomment, which will just make that process a little bit faster for you. And then you have your typical ones like find if you're trying to look for a specific keywords. Again, if you have a huge code and you want to find um, certain keywords, or maybe you want to find and replace you can also do that. So again, like how you would typically code, if you have some naming conventions that you want to change, you can use find and replace to kind of easily do that. So along with that, there is also this command palette here, which has a lot of other commands here, more advanced commands that you can actually use to make your life a little bit more convenient if you know how to use them. So but for now, we're not going to go through the command palette. So let's go back to the comments here that the DAX query review has has generated for us. So it's telling us here that it's saying that here's a sample of the DAX query from your model, click run, which is what we've done. And then on the third line here, it says try other DAX queries by right clicking a table, column or measure in the data pane and choosing one from quick queries. So let's have a go at doing that in one of our tables here. So let's look at, uh, let's say the order details and let's uh, from this view, right click on this data pane. As you can see, there is a new option for you on this right click menu, we have the quick queries, and you have a few things here. So you have show top 100, show column statistics, and a few things here. So let's start by clicking the shop show top 100 rows. Here we go. So as you can see, what it's done is first of all, it's created a second tab here, a second query. So that means that your first query is saved on that first tab. And as I mentioned before, you can have a lot of queries in the same data model, you can rename them, and you can keep them saved so that you can work on them later. So from this code here, as you can see, it generated the right DAX query for us that generates the top 100 rows from this order details table. So you have your top 100, all of the columns in that table, and then it ordered it by order ID ascending. And then what it's done is it also ran the query to show the results here. So it's giving us already the top 100 rows from the order details table. So while these are generated DAX queries, that doesn't mean that you can't edit them. So you can change what is being shown or even how it's sorted by just modifying and rerunning the query that is generated for you. So that's probably the fastest way that you can start getting acquainted yourself with the DAX query view. So for example, let's say we don't want the discount to show in this uh, result. We can just simply delete that from the result here. And also maybe we don't want to order it by ID. Maybe we want to order it by, well, actually let's order it by order ID, but we want to sort it descending instead. So it will just show us the latest orders from our database. So if we hit run, as you can see, it removed the discounts column from our results and it sorted it descending order. So it's giving us the latest or most recent orders from our table. So looking now at this results pane here at the bottom, 
So obviously you can see the table that is generated to us. Um, you can highlight them and, you know, well, actually just scroll through them. If you have multiple or if you have a lot of results, you can, you know, go through and paginate through those different results. And you can also copy the result that is returned from this DAX query view and copy it somewhere else like an Excel, for example. However, this is what I typically use for testing purposes if I wanted to check the values that are being returned, but not necessarily part of my process. Let's have a look at some of the other options that is available for you in the Quick Queries menu. So on the same table, let's click Quick Queries and then go Show Column Statistics. So if we click on that, what it will do is it will just give us all of the columns that are available for you in that I just focus on the results here. So what it does is it gives us all of the columns within this table and it gives us some statistics about these columns. So how many rows of data there are, how many distinct values there are. So the typical things that you would get when you're trying to understand the makeup of your data. Now, again, you can get all of these stats from the data view, but find that having another option, which is a little bit quicker is, is always good. Let's look at the other thing that is available for you that is not grayed out, which is define all measures in this model. Now there is the model means everything that you have in your current project in your current report file. But if you have well, actually, let's just go through and click that because the other one is in this table, which is grayed out because we don't have any measures in that table. And that's because we organize all of our measures usually in our measures table here. Now, if we right click on that, you will notice that both of these options are available, which is basically the same thing. So let's go and define all the measures in this model. So here we are. So what is done is it's created a define here, which just gives us all of the measures that is available to us that is in this model, as well as showing us and running those measures to show what the results of those measures are. So this is actually a very handy view, especially if you're wanting to catalog all of the measures that you're using in your data model. So now that we've gone through the options that you have on the tables, let's try to right click one of the measures here because they have a few other different options available for you. So here we have some few options here. So here we have a few new options available to us. You have the evaluate, which if I click here, it will simply just show or run the, the query for us, the DAX query, just to show us the results of that. If we go and right click and define and evaluate, what it does is it shows us the the syntax that is in that measure. So what how it's written as well as you know running that 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 query. And you have another option here, uh, which is the define with references and evaluate. So this is an option that I found extremely useful, especially if you have measures that are referencing other measures which are referencing other measures. So if you have kind of chain measures like that, where uh, it can be very difficult to track, you know, what the actual logic is, because it's always depending on on others, this actually lets you see that whole chain by defining all of the references that are being made in those measures so that you can see them all in one page. So just for an example here, I've created a measure here, which is basically target delta, which if I just simply define and evaluate, it calculates using the sales. It's referencing the sales measure as part of its calculation, but is in the sales measure. We don't really know unless we go into the sales. And then if there are any other references in the sales, then we have to go deeper and deeper. Now with this new option, quick queries, define with references and evaluate. In this same view, now you can see the definition of the target delta as well as any other references to other measures. So the sales as well is over here. Perfect. Now let's have a look at this pretty cool neat thing that I found that you can do from this view. So let's say we want to update some of our measures. Like let's say we want to change this target delta and change its calculation. Maybe we want, it doesn't make any sense at the moment, but uh, let's just pretend we want to change something in this expression. So let's say we want to change it into let's say 9,000. As you can see, as I've written that, you can see this new option here that pops up update model overwrite measure. So what it will do is it will save the changes that I made to this measure, save it to the model without me having to do that directly into the model itself. So if I click that update model, now, if we go to the target Delta, which is uh, let's just go back to this view here, let's go to the target Delta. 
as you can see, there we go. The changes have been overwritten through the DAX query view. So it's really handy for that. Another thing that you probably would have noticed in this view is the IntelliSense. So as I was writing, you know, some values, for example, you will notice that the IntelliSense work in the same way that it works in the formula bar, which is really, really handy. It's a lot of, it's one of the, I guess, drawbacks of using third party tools is that it doesn't really support IntelliSense the same way that native DAX editing in Power BI Desktop does. But another thing, that is really cool here is that, for example, we were talking about references earlier. And uh, when you hover over measures like this, for example, as you can see, it gives you the definition of those measures as well. So it means that for simple references that don't go too deep, this gives you a really quick insight on what those measures actually do without having to switch your views. So that's pretty cool. And I think that pretty much covers the basic things that you can do with the new DAX query view. Now, I'm sure I have missed something because I've just covered kind of the, the kind of basic elements of what you can do with it. However, if you want to read more and are you know pretty interested about using this and finding out more about the other things that you can do with it, I'll leave the link to the full blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.